I don't trust her. Can we just focus on the meeting, please? Can we focus on not letting a stranger into our business? I understand how you feel. Okay, okay. Reagan, like, just talk to me, please. <laughs> we need to get this right. I understand that. We could lose one of our biggest clients. I know. But I do love your pitch. It's really good. Yeah, and most of them are Keisha's ideas. She should be in this meeting. I'm not going to allow a stranger to come into our office. Our company depends on this. Yeah, but I'm just trying to do the right thing. I, I, I know I may have just met her, but she's my sister, Reagan. It just feels wrong. It's simple. We're sticking to my plan. When justice gets here, Keisha's not going to be in this office. Sean Robinson, welcome to American Black Journal and welcome home to Detroit. Thank you, Stephen. I love being a part of anything my city is doing. Anytime I get to visit uh, in person or virtually, I'm in. So thank you so much for having me. Yeah, yeah. So, of course, you've had a really, really remarkable career uh, in Hollywood, but this new work is kind of a different turn. Um, let's start with the names for uh, these programs, Lust and Envy. Now, there's something kind of ominous about those words. Well, <laughs> Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, you know, first of all, I actually started my career in Detroit, uh, WGPR, Channel 62, a long, long time ago, uh, but most people who know me nationally know me from Access Hollywood, where I spent 16 years covering the red carpet uh, and interviewing, you know, all the celebrities uh, in Hollywood. Um, and I started thinking towards the end of that period, what I wanted to do, what I wanted the next or additional chapter to look like. And I knew that I wanted to uh, be a content creator to produce content. And, you know, as journalists, we're really producers at heart because we've had to, you know, produce our own stories many times coming up the ranks and we had to have a vision for our stories. And so a friend of mine who worked at Essence Magazine at the time, this was back in 2016, told me about a galley of this book, lust that he received. It had not reached store shelves yet. It had just, um, the galley came to his desk and he said, Sean, it's written by author Victoria Christopher Murray. She's writing each of the seven deadly sins. And the first one, lust is about to come out. You should call her and option the entire series. And so that's what I did. I knew Victoria, so I called her up and optioned these, uh, these books. And I kind of pitched them around town. I knew that I wanted to make them into movies. And um, it was, you know, a year of really pitching. And then uh, what happened was Bishop T.D. Jakes did a partnership with Lifetime, who I'd also pitched the books to. And he, through his producing uh, partner, called me up and said, Sean, you remember those books that you pitched to us about a year ago? Do you still have them? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, Bishop T.D. Jakes would like to executive produce them with you uh, for Lifetime. And I was like, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, um, so that's what we did. So hopefully, because I've been telling everybody in Detroit, hopefully you've already seen Lust and then Envy, the second are. book in the series, also a movie, the encore it's presentation of Envy airs tonight uh, in Detroit uh, at 6 p.m. So make sure you tune in for that. So yeah, that's what it's been. Now I'm an executive producer for the first time through Lifetime and I'm, I'm so thrilled. I'm really, really happy. Yeah, so, so that's an important milestone to reach as well. Uh, because even though it's 2021, uh, things aren't all fair. Things aren't all equal. And it's still tough uh, for women in Hollywood and, uh, of course, for Black women in Hollywood to get opportunities to do the kind of work uh, that you're doing. Executive producing uh, is, is kind of the height of, of work in, in Hollywood, and it's, it's still pretty exclusive. 
Yes. And that's why I love that I have this partnership with Lifetime because, um, you know, as a Black female, you know, we run into many closed doors here in Hollywood and listen, every sector. But uh, in terms of Hollywood, um, it is very, very tough. And so for this door to be opened and for me to be able to open the doors for other Black women, for other women of color, for people of color is really important for me because uh, I know how tough it is. Listen, it's, it's, it's tough for everybody, but equally um, it, 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 it's, it's extremely, uh, you know, you have to have a lot of perseverance out here. So to be a person that is able to create opportunities for other people is um, it's just a thrill for me. And that's that's how I want to use my platform and create great movies. You know, at the at the end of the day, it has to be entertaining. And who can't identify, Stephen, with those temptations that we are confronted with? Listen, I was raised in a church and, you know, that's what the sermon is usually about, resisting temptation. And so these are morality tales, lust and envy. And I'm going to put you on the spot. Can you name the five other deadly sins? You've got lust, envy. Gluttony. Yep. Um, uh, uh, Greed. 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 <laughs> pride. Pride. Wrath. And sloth. And sloth. Right. Yes. It's always my favorite. <laughs> Sloth is your favorite. <laughs> okay. That's the hardest one to resist. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So uh, we, you know, we've got this entire book series, and hopefully, uh, with your support, we'll be able to do the other five deadly sins because we need to know about all of them and resisting the temptation of all of them. So yeah. hopefully, everybody, yeah, yeah tunes in. So, so is it easier, do you think, in 2021 uh, for you to be doing this work uh, than, it, than it has been? I mean, are we headed in the right direction uh, well, in Hollywood with getting rid of those barriers? Well, you know, th th listen, I think on some level there will always be barriers, but I think it is, it, you know, it's really up to us to uh, keep pushing forward and keep, once again, opening the doors. My, my parents and grandparents always taught me if God gives you a platform, use it to give back. And so that's what I'm trying to do. My focus not only is creating good content, but also creating uh, these opportunities. And, you know, for years, you know, listen, Stephen, for years when I was at Access Hollywood covering the red carpet, you know, somebody could be the toast of the town one year, riding high, getting awards, you know, accolades. And then the next year they can't get arrested. Okay. So it's, it's, you know, it's a tough business. Yeah. So, um, you know, we need more people who are able, you know, to reach back and help other people, oh, you know, get those job opportunities. And, and so, um, you know, I'm really thrilled. I'm really very happy. And hopefully there's a lot more to come. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're also working through your foundation to kick those doors open for women around the country. So. Yes, yes. So my foundation is called the Sean Foundation for Girls, and we um, help level the playing field for girls from underserved and underrepresented communities. And we work in five key areas, and those are represented by the acronym of my name, S-H-A-U-N. So S is for STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. H is health. A is arts, U is unity, and N is neighborhoods. So if there is a nonprofit that is doing work in one of those five key areas, we would possibly be a resource for them. I kicked things off in Detroit with a grant um, to the incredible organization Alternatives for Girls. And one of the things that they do is help rescue girls and young women uh, from you know, sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. And they are phenomenal. So we gave them a grant and we also did an initiative in Detroit, uh, a, a sex trafficking prevention workshop to help our young girls learn about what, you know, what's happening out there, how pimps and luring girls into the uh, sex trafficking industry. It's not just happening overseas, it's happening right in our own backyards. Yeah, yeah. Um, the work that you're doing, uh, what, do you, what do you hear from young women about 
the challenges that they face uh, right now and, and how different that might be from what you faced uh, as a young person here in Detroit? Well, you know, uh, Stephen, right now my uh, foundation is working on a documentary about implicit bias towards black girls, mm -hmm. which is as we're having this national conversation about Black Lives Matter, um, I'm focusing on the lives of black girls and how uh, the, the biases that they face every single day coming from the for, coming from adults, black and white, yeah. that um, are are preventing them from achieving their dreams that are you know, affecting their self-esteem and their chances for success and how we all as a society suffer when a marginalized group isn't able to reach their fullest potential. We all suffer as a society. And you know, it's interesting, Stephen, um, I was having this conversation about the documentary and as I've been telling people about the work that we're doing, um, inevitably somebody says, you know, well, what about black boys? Black boys, you know, black boys are having a very tough too. Well, you know, black boys. And I said, you are absolutely right. Black boys are having it really tough. I am focusing on black girls. I will help you focus on, you know, what you're passionate about. And I will focus on, you know, um, putting black girls at the center. And it's so interesting, Stephen, because Whenever I mention black girls, somebody inevitably says, well, what about black boys? When I'm talking about black boys, no one ever says, well, what about black girls? Wow, wow. Black people have a hard time keeping black girls in the center. And that's what I am doing with, uh, with the foundation. And as black females, we're used to being pushed to the side so that other people um, you know, can, can, can rise. And we, and we need to start focusing on our girls. It doesn't take anything away from anybody else, but we need to make sure that their needs are being met. 